Hello, survivors. Welcome to the State of Decay 2 stream. I'm your host, Jeffrey Card, and we've been teasing for quite some time that we were going to have more info to reveal about the ongoing work on State of Decay 2 in the coming whatever amount of time. Uh, today, you're going to get your very first tiny taste of what's in store. We're going to talk about the open beta that we're launching for State of Decay 2. But before we get to that, I should introduce our guest. Uh, this is Chris Haverneck. He is a senior UX designer at Undead Labs. Uh, he came to us a few months ago uh, from Blizzard most recently, so you know he's serious. Chris, how you doing? <laughs> Pretty good. How about you? Uh, I'm good. We should talk to the audience about what you do, because we've had sure. user experience designers on here before. They've met Kelsey, they've met Susan, and we've explained it. So people who've been watching our stream for some time probably already know what a user experience designer is. But for those who don't, uh, what is it that you say you do here? <laughs> sure. <laughs> so uh, the pitch I usually give to folks who are asking what is UX design uh, is usually something along the lines of, uh, I try to, at least in the sense of games, marry what we want to do design intent wise with uh, what players are expecting, what is ideal for players. Uh, a cheat I'll sometimes use when explaining it to someone like my mom will be like, so I'm kind of the architect where I help lay out the blueprints of something, knowing all the business requirements or the player requirements, and then engineers make it work and UI designers make it look good. Uh, so that's essentially what I do. All right, that's awesome. Well. Without further ado, you and I should get on to explaining what's going on with this open beta idea. So we're running an open beta very soon. It has not launched yet, uh, but it's right on the horizon. And the first thing you need to know about it is that it is going to be on Steam. So if you are a Steam player, uh, you're going to get the opportunity very soon to switch over to playing the game on the beta branch, which is going to include some new features uh, that have not been released in the wild yet. And we're going to be looking for your feedback on how those features are working for you as you play the game long term. Uh, and so it's going to be really important for you to not only play the game, but also communicate with us about the game so that we can uh, respond to your feedback and, and know what to do with it to make the features better for everyone else once, uh, once it goes broader. Now, the thing that's nice about an open beta, especially for people who play the game somewhere other than Steam, is the fact that it's open. Uh, so what's an open beta? So historically, we've already done closed betas in the past. And when you do a closed beta, what you're doing is inviting a, a trusted small group of players uh, to sort of uh, play in a separate environment from everyone else where they get access to new features, things you're testing out, and they're not allowed to talk about it. They can't, uh, they have to sign an NDA, so they're legally obligated not to share anything until it's ready to go live. Um, and so that means they can't stream, they can't talk on social media, they can only talk in like dedicated spaces that we've created uh, uh, to have discussions about the ongoing features. This is not that. This is an open beta. That means that there are no secrets. Anybody who wants to be a part of the beta, who plays the game on Steam, can get in there and be a part of it. Um, and there's not going to be an NDA. You can stream, you can talk on social media, you can have public conversations about the in-progress features that we're working on. And so that means that even if you don't play the game on Steam, you can still get involved in the conversation. You can still you know, see what's going on, uh, make, your, you know, make your voice heard, and there's going to be lots of occasions for you to also you know, get involved in, in giving us feedback on what you think. Now, the question is, we've done closed betas in the past, so... Why are we interested in doing an open beta now? I mean, for one thing, the game came out three years ago. <laughs> what is the benefit to us of running an open beta and, and getting you all involved? I'm not necessarily the best person to answer that question. I think the expert on this is actually a user experience designer. And, and, and I happen to have one along uh, with me for the ride. So, uh, Chris, why run an open beta on a game like this? Sure. Yeah, so great question. Um, we can play test the game internally all we want but we've been playing the game for months or in some cases years. So it's hard to tell exactly how players are going to react to something or how they're going to play through it. Uh, so one thing we really want to do is be able to test with people who play the game or potentially even are new to the game. Uh, so one way to do that is through betas. Uh, open is better in my opinion, and just that we get to collect that much more feedback. So whether it's through telemetry, looking at actual stats on like what players are doing with X, Y, or Z, or through survey feedback. Uh, it's all in the vein of trying to get as much feedback as possible and incorporating into the game uh, before it becomes a real, like full-fledged update. 
Yeah, so we're already, you know, we already use the wish list. We already use support.stateofdecay.com. We already have an open Discord and we, you know, listen to people on social media. We've got all these sources that we use to get feedback on the game that's live. Uh, but there's sort of a, a turnaround time. When we find out about a problem, it takes us some time <laughs> to, you know, write it up, work on it, get ready to release it for an update, you know, test it thoroughly and then put it out there. When we're running an open beta like this, this is a much more direct route for you to give us your feedback earlier to help us improve the game faster. And, and we can get sort of, you know, the improvements we need to make based on your feedback to you quicker because you were able to start earlier in the process, which is great. Uh, and so the question now is like, how do I get involved? Uh, so uh, right now, like I said, we have not launched the beta yet. It's coming in the near future. Uh, if you want to know when it launches and how to get involved with it, uh, the main, the best way that you can do that is to get our newsletter. Go to www.stateofdecay.com slash contact. Uh, you can you know, fill out a form there to get access to our newsletter. And there's actually a box, a checkbox on that form where you can say specifically that you're interested in beta information. So if you sign up there, as soon as the beta is available, we'll make sure to get information to you and let you know exactly what you need to do in order to become a part of this beta. So that's awesome. I'm, you know, I'm really excited for this. This is uh, one more channel for us to get, you know, really useful feedback from the audience uh, into our game. Um, and so, oh, actually, so we did have a question while we were talking uh, from uh, Kazooks, who asks, uh, I don't get it. <laughs> what do they mean by a beta? And so actually, maybe we should actually back up a little bit. So for folks who maybe don't really aren't really up on, you know, game industry jargon. When we're running a beta about a game, what does that actually mean? Let's let's, let's get down to, to to the basics there real quick to make sure everyone gets it. Chris, do you wanna do you wanna run with that? Sure. Uh so yeah, with the beta, we take a little bit more liberty with tweaking some of the values or having fun with some of the concepts uh, where we know it's not going to be something that's necessarily going to be fully baked, um, but we're looking to get feedback on it regardless. Uh, so we have the opportunity to mess around with values like I was mentioning for difficulty, for example. Not that that's what we're doing for this beta, uh, but just something in the way of making it where we can get feedback from players and not affect the mainline game. Uh, where it might not be the most ideal player experience for millions of people who are playing it. Yeah, exactly. Like basically, we want to be able to test stuff that we're not exactly sure is ready for uh, for for prime time yet, uh, and so we can get feedback on it early from people who have opted in and decided they want to experience sort of a a rougher, newer experience of the game. And then once we get the feedback from them, then we can release it to the wild and everyone can have it, and it'll be in a better state than it would have been if we'd just you know sort of gone live with just our internal testing. Uh, so we do have another couple of questions, but I think I'll let's get started with gameplay first uh, before we start uh, uh, messing with that. So uh, Chris and I are sitting here in my usual uh, our, my usual streaming community. Uh, I'm wearing this beautiful, beautiful outfit. Actually, oh oh man, I, I feel like I wore I wore the same dress to prom as somebody else. This is actually kind of embarrassing. I should switch characters. Uh, oh, are we wearing the same thing? No, no, no. <laughs> I'm wearing the same thing as one of my own community members. This is a, 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 a problem of my entirely of my own making. Uh, but so I, we already showed last week. We already showed off the uh, the hoodie that you can get from the plunder pack. But check out this beautiful bandana you can get from the current bounty pack, the the, the plunder pack that's over there at the bounty broker. So anyway, uh, so Chris and I have got some work to get done out here. I've got a couple of infestations that are really close to my base and causing problems. We've got a survivor in need up here that we can probably also help. Uh, you'll also note that uh, over there at my um, on my bounties, I've completed a bounty recently in my my retail game that, that I play on my on my personal stream, and so we should probably go and collect the reward for that and check out the blunderbuss. Uh, I've got a character who's already wielding a shotgun, so that's a really good move. So why don't we why don't we hold out and get in the car, and then we'll start fielding okay. some questions. I'll follow you. Let's uh, let's start off going to the bounty broker so that we can uh, put our new equipment to use. And maybe we can even get synced up on which bounties we're going after. So let me, Sounds good to me mark him so he's a little easier to find. There he is. I mean, I know where he is, but for some reason, I always feel obligated to mark him on my map. <laughs> it's okay. I still check Google Maps for how to get to places a block down the street from me sometimes. So uh, one of the questions that we got from the chat uh, is from Court88, who wants to know, um, how will the open beta affect uh, the beta testers that are already under an NDA? Uh, so if you get involved in the open beta, if you've been involved in a closed beta in the past, that's totally cool. If you get involved in the open beta, 
you don't have an NDA for that. You can still talk about anything that you uh, you see in the open beta. Uh, there's nothing special uh, for people who've been NDA'd before uh, that, that restricts them from talking about what they see in the open beta. So, you know, so don't worry about that. Um, Adam Survives wants to know if beta players are going to be able to play with non-beta players at the same time. And I believe that that is a no. Uh, it is really important. One of the reasons why, um, you know, like Xbox Live won't let you play multiplayer with someone until everyone's fully updated with the game is because playing the game on two different builds is actually, uh, could cause real problems, uh, real technical problems. And so since you'll be playing two different builds, the beta players are going to be playing a different build from the public players. Uh, that means that you won't be able to play together. So if you want to play uh, multiplayer with someone in the beta, it's got to be someone else who has also opted into the beta. I think there was a question too about mm -hmm. if multiplayer will be available in the beta. Oh yeah, so it will it will work. You will have multiplayer. You just got to play with other beta people. Is 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 how I understand it. Now, if someone finds that if somebody from Undead Labs is watching this and thinks that I'm wrong, feel free to tell me. <laughs> uh, come into the uh, to the Marcom live stream channel and let me know. But I believe that that's the case. <laughs> I'm giving you the best information that I have. All right, so I've recently completed this bounty that gives me a Sea Dog blunderbuss as a reward. So I'm gonna grab that because my current character is a shotgun wielder and, uh, oh, that is the wrong button. And the, the Sea Dog blunderbuss is actually one of the coolest shotguns in the game. You can kind of see it on her back here. It looks like it's all decked out with like uh, Sea of Thieves type uh, markings on it. And uh, look at the spread on this thing. So it's not a very accurate long range weapon, uh, but uh, it can do a lot of damage up close. We're going to have to go get in some trouble with that thing. What are you wielding over there? What's that gun you've got, Thwip? Uh, I have an RTX Stormbringer. Oh, that is my favorite gun. Oh my gosh. I didn't recognize it, it at first. Fun. The angle pointing at me. This is one of the best guns in the game. It is a, uh, I believe you have to get it from like Red Talon Traders or, uh, and stuff like that, but it is, it is good. Yep. All right, uh, so let's see here. So the bounties that I have right now, I've got the bounty for killing uh, ferals with a shotgun, and I've also got the one for killing hordes. And I think we'll be able to get both of those on this stream, presu presuming we're lucky enough to get attacked by a feral. I'm trying to think what other uh, bounty should I grab? Let's see here. This crafting first aid kit's that kind of boring on a stream. Armored Zeds with explosives might be interesting. Uh, we'll have to go grab some explosives, but that might be a good move. That'll be another plunder pack one. And we can unlock the Naval Tricorn, though I've already got that one unlocked. But maybe that's the best one to do. Yeah, let's let's. I'll grab that one. So I don't know if you want to grab the same bounties as me. It's uh, it, they're all. I think two of them are, that I've got are in the plunder pack. Uh, it's it's uh, on the upper right and the lower right. And then I've upper also right and lower right. I believe they're always in the same order. And then I've got uh, <laughs> on the Trumbull Valley pack. I've got the kill ferals with a shotgun one at the bottom there. So you can do whatever you want, of course. Uh, but what were the two plunder pack ones that you were going to do? Uh, one was uh, killing hordes, and the other one was uh, okay. I think armored zeds killed with explosives. Okay. And then what was the last one that you had? Sorry. Oh, uh, then I also had um, Killing Ferals with a Shotgun. That's in the Trumbull Valley pack. I think it's the last one on that pack. Okay. Yep. All right. I picked up those three. Uh, so we've got a lot of people in the chat who are asking uh, why it's only Steam and if we'll ever have a beta on Xbox. Uh, so I I can't make any promises one way or the other about whether we'll ever do a beta on Xbox. Uh, I believe that we were just... We were very uh, sort of familiar with and ready to go on uh, the beta on Steam. That's where we've done our our closed betas in the past, and so we were just we were really comfortable with that environment, and uh, and so there wasn't any sort of like value judgment about the two platforms or anything like that. It was just that was where we could do it. That's where we could easily get it up and running. And uh, you know, if you're interested in us doing a beta on other platforms, definitely send us that feedback. Uh, I can't make you any promises, uh, but you know that is if if there's a strong interest for it, I mean that's that's a thing that we should know. But yeah, I can't definitely can't make any promises on that score. I know that we can that we were all equipped to do it uh, to do it on Steam, and so that's that's what we ran with for this one. So while I'm driving, uh, let's actually find out a little bit more about uh, uh, about Chris here, because uh, you know we I like I like people getting to know uh, the other members of the uh, uh, of the lab. So one thing that Chris has done that not everyone has done was starting a brand new remote job 
in the middle of the pandemic. Uh, so <laughs> what's that experience been like for you, Chris? That was interesting. So moved from Southern California uh, up to Seattle, had to find an apartment purely off of FaceTiming various apartment folks. Uh, we, I've Obviously, in an ideal world, I think we would have flown up here, driven or whatever uh, to take a look. But given the times, that wasn't super realistic. So if we lucked out, knock on wood, so far nothing has fallen apart. Um, and we're in an apartment now, but starting the job itself was interesting too, because at least for me as a person, like I get to know people on like a very like personal basis, I guess, like being able to interact with them in person, not just over the screen. Yeah. Uh, and then even if we are doing video conference calls, not everyone has video on for whatever reason. Uh, so sometimes it's harder to get to know them then. Uh, but yeah, that's what it's been like so far. It's been interesting. <laughs> okay. But uh, definitely doable, and everyone's been super nice about it. Oh, what the heck? Somebody's already dead. What's going on? So I just took this mission on, and uh, it is going very badly so far. Look at the kick on this shotgun, though. <laughs> it's kind of ridiculous. Anybody else? Okay. Oh, it looks like you got the last zombie. All right, so. let's talk to a survivor. We just saved a Red Talon squad. Sorry about your friend, man. The guy was being chased by a bloater as we rolled up. That was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect timing. Oh, so we have a lot of people asking about the release date of the beta, and we do not have that to announce yet. So uh, we're, we're still working on getting it up and running. We don't want to promise it until we know that we are definitely going to be able to get it done uh, by a certain date. So uh, we'll, it, it's going to be very soon. I mean, we're, we're announcing it now because we want people to get ready. But uh, we don't have a specific date to announce yet. So get excited, uh, but don't mark your calendars because there's nothing to mark. So, um, so let's see here. So one thing that, uh, that we are, that we do want people to understand is the fact that this beta is not going to be showing all of the work that we've been doing, uh, for the past several months since the last time we did a major update to the game. Um, you know, we're going to, we picked and chose a few features that we wanted to beta test, but there's a bunch of, that once players see the features that we're beta testing, I want them to not assume that that's all we've been doing. We've actually been doing a lot more and there's going to be more announcements coming even after the beta is live. Let me find these, uh, oh. This infestation, that's where I want to go. Um, and so one thing that's sort of uh, kind of a question, I think it's a good question for you, Chris, is, you know, what what kinds of features are the best ones to try to test out in an open beta? Because there's some things that we do want to test and some things we don't. Like, what, like what, how do we make that decision? Yeah. Um, so it's, there's not an exact science to it. Some of the things that we would want to test is just something where there's a whole lot of dynamics involved, whether it's dependent on the multiplayer and single player or anything to do really with um, something that might not be as easy to answer if we just look at a bunch of different versions on the screen ourselves, um, but we want wider feedback on. So something uh, now as I try to oh. answer the question <laughs> and get out of the car at the same time. <laughs> oh, this, oh, oh, oh man, we'll see our, how car, this goes. our car is going is to blow up. Get out of there quick. Okay. <laughs> Oh, and there is a feral if you need to kill him. Oh, I do, I do, I do. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, I'm all, I, don't kill him, don't kill him. I'm all out of shotgun ammo. I gotta load up. Yes. Oh, I've been trying to get that feral kill for ages on my personal stream, and I've not been able to do it. So thank you for calling that out. <laughs> yeah. Oh, all right. Yeah, so like, so for instance, you know, like if, if we're making a change to the UI and we're like, oh, hey, does this look good? Does that look good? Usually we don't get full of anxiety about that and feel like we need to check with like a million people to get their opinion on whether we mm -hmm. like the way a button looks. But something like a broader system, like like if we, you know, had been equipped to do an open beta when we were working on Lethal Zone, for instance, we probably would have wanted to do that, right? And get as, as broad feedback as we can because something like an entire difficulty level is complex and, and, it, and it really ties into the game, not in just one specific place, but like it touches so many different parts of the game. It's really hard to predict what its effects are going to be until we see people actually playing it themselves and, and seeing how it interacts with their broader experience, right? Right, yeah. If we were going to change something more straightforward, like how crosshairs look, for example, mm -hmm. um, that could be something that we create a bunch of different versions, play around with internally and feel pretty safe about putting that out there. But when we're talking about something that's a little bit more complex, that's when we like to get more widespread, widespread feedback before we go and commit with something. Well, our car 
is in massive trouble. Um, <laughs> oh, there is an ambulance nearby, though. Let's let's go grab that ambulance. I'm, I'm completely out of inventory space, so I've got to at least unload some stuff before we go scavenging. So, um... Uh, so awesome twitch dude asks uh how long will the beta last uh, so i don't think we've actually got an end date on it like we're basically we've it's gonna we, we're seeing this beta as a useful tool that we could probably keep on going for quite some time um you know this is not this set of features that we're that we're testing right now is not the last set of features we're going to want to test and so i imagine that what we're probably going to do is just keep that beta branch open and uh, anytime we want to test something new we can just we can drop it into that beta branch and and, and sort of keep it going on an ongoing basis yeah, that, I mean, from a UX perspective, that's my dream <laughs> as far as just being able to drip in content and test it out, tweak it, and try to go from there and make it that much better before it goes out into the wild. But we'll see. So most of these, okay, most of these uh, containers in the back are are labeled for you to pick up. So I'll grab the stuff over here. Do you normally uh, fast search or no? Oh yeah, I fast search like crazy. Go nuts. <laughs> I, I, I completely lack the uh, the the whatever personality trait it takes to slow search. Anytime if I'm yeah. terrified, like like the other day on my personal, like t actually this morning on my personal stream, um, there was this juggernaut that I was not equipped to deal with. Um, but I had to complete a mission. I had to get something out of a certain uh, building, and so I, I had to sneak by the juggernaut, sneak into the building, and then I was slow searching like crazy. Oh, this is a dead end. Uh, slow searching <laughs> like crazy because I was terrified he was going to notice me and then I would have a lot of trouble getting out of there. Uh, he was going to bring over a bunch of other zombies. It was going to be a mess. So I decided not to do that. But uh, normally, yeah, I, I fast search habitually. I, I just, I can't stop myself. Same. And someone did ask if they can use their existing community in the beta. That's right, yeah. So I, I believe that as I understand it, if you, it, once you, uh, when you enroll in the beta, and, and please, uh, if it turns out that I'm wrong about this, uh, I apologize in advance. But I believe that the way it works is you can choose to to, to bring over your exist, uh, basically a copy of your existing communities, um, and and work with those. And then uh, you know from then on, you know all the things you do in the beta branch are not kept on your on on your regular community. I think the beta branch right. basically kind of becomes its own thing. But I believe you can bring uh, sort of versions of your your current communities over. If I'm wrong about that, I apologize. But I believe that was the, the last version of the discussion of that that I had internally said that that was how <laughs> that it was going to go. sounds like what I've heard too. Okay, cool. So I believe that's the plan. Um, all right. So, well, we did all the stuff I was going to do. Uh, we got a big, nasty uh, shotgun. Maybe we should take it over to a uh, to a play guard. You feel like going after a play guard? Yeah. Uh, let me see if I've got any... I mean, I've got some fire. I don't really have any explosives. That's fine. I've got the biggest, nastiest shotgun in the world. I'm sure this will go great. Meanwhile, I'll let our uh, our people up here in the uh, in the watchtower deal with these zombies. Oh, look, a juggernaut and a screamer. Let's take the screamer out. Boom. Oh, no, 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 not the bloater, not the bloater, not the bloater. No, 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 no. Get away from me. This could be bad. Get away from me. Everyone get away from me. Oh, my gosh. Okay. I'm so good at this game. Um, <laughs> <laughs> all right so um so how do we figure out like when we're when we're beta testing a feature how do we figure out if it's doing well or if it needs to change like like how do we evaluate our own work uh i think there's, there's a lot of different ways right mm -hmm. oh yeah totally uh and it's not just one by any means either so we're looking at the pure data the number size of things so we have a team dedicated to that um, and when you say the number side of things, it's... like what does that mean? Like, like what are we actually doing? How... Sure. So we have telemetry hooked up into the game where we can see how many players did a certain action or when they did it or how often they did it and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and it gets a little bit more complex than that, too. Yeah. Uh, so we can see like spawn rates and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and then I don't think it's a secret, but there will be a survey tied to the beta, too. Uh, so we're looking for actual feedback from the players that aren't just hard numbers, but like what their opinions are on X, Y, or Z, too. Uh, so we try to find ways to incorporate both uh, because there's going to be some questions that are better answered by numbers purely. And then there's going to be some questions that are better answered by more like conversational like straight text uh, from players rather than just the numbers. And then there's going to be some that's a combination of the two. So 
So yeah. now, there's potential for there to be a lot of players uh, in this beta. How, how do we design survey questions so that we can even tell what people are saying? <laughs> oh, yeah, crap. it's it's uh, it's a combination of art and science for sure, where you have to be specific enough to ask questions that are going to make an impact. I don't want to put questions oh, in the survey where, oh, there is a feral. Yes, I and, and I don't have any away. ammo, so I'm jumping out a window <laughs> right now. Down. We can finish answering this question as we go, as sure. we find opportunities. <laughs> there we go. Okay, Feral's down. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Yeah. So back to the question, uh, as far as like what makes the survey good, uh, or how do we try to find questions that make an impact? So one thing I don't want to do is have questions in the survey just for the sake of having questions. If we're not going to actually change something based off of it input from players. I don't think it makes sense to ask about it. Uh, but what we are trying to do is trying to ask questions broadly enough where we can find trends between specific types of players, whether they're using controllers or a keyboard, a mouse, uh, and try to go from there. So not necessarily saying Jane or Joe said this one thing, so we're going to change it all, but looking for trends as far as like, oh, we're seeing an abundance of players having this kind of opinion. Uh, so maybe we should think about redoing it. Or maybe we don't and we have a reason for it, but uh, we always try to take into consideration as much player feedback as possible. So a lot of the questions are going to be like multiple choice type stuff so that we can really easily, you know, aggregate what multiple mm -hmm. people are saying. But then there's also going to be like essay questions. And it's going to yeah. be somebody's job to read a lot of those essay questions. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> probably be me. Uh, <laughs> one of the things that I'll try to do uh, to make it a little bit more easy too is, so they call it like coding responses. So rather than saying, okay, Jeffrey, hey, we got X thousands of responses in the survey, read through each of these, uh, but I can go through and kind of tag response with, oh, this is a positive response and it's about uh, wanting more of this thing. And then this other response is negative and is wanting less of this thing. So using that to kind of turn text answers into answers that are a little bit easier to sort. Oh, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, I am doing a bad job in here. <laughs> <laughs> this might not work very well. So if we, uh, obviously, if we had Joe Swarner here, uh, he would be doing much better at fighting this play card than I am. <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. Where is it? Oh, let's it's, see if it's, I can it's, poke it's at deep it. in this room over here. So. Okay, we've got... Okay, we've taken it down some. There we go, we got it. And because we're in the dread zone and not the lethal zone, it actually killed all of these, all of the plague zombies that were around <laughs> us. If this was lethal zone, we'd still have to make our escape. Yeah, I still haven't ventured too much into lethal zone. I should, though. So it's, it was definitely, so I, I did, uh, on my personal stream, I did a, a, a playthrough where I tried to do the lethal zone and I managed to survive, I think three hour long sessions before my community completely collapsed. <laughs> uh, so here, you, if you want anything out of that uh, sucker, go right ahead. I, I just took all the good stuff. So, eh. Um, so uh, Catiello wants to know, will we have a limit on how many people can do the beta or the survey questions? Oh crap. Oh, thank you. Oh, very helpful. Uh, so do my best. So I believe that we're that no, like I I think that it's basically, I think that if a lot of people take the survey, it might take us more time to process it. But we're not we're not imposing a limit uh, and telling people that they can't be in the beta because we've got too many people. Oh, actually, I have really bad uh, blood plague. Plague right now. Same here. Yes. Let's go home. <laughs> That's what I get for trying to pay attention to the conversation, chat, <laughs> my UI, or the HUD. Uh, you might want to knock that <laughs> zombie off. Same there we, time. we got it. Okay, yeah, let's head home. So I've got at least one cure. I'm pretty sure I've got the wherewithal to manufacture more. So that, uh, if you don't have any cure in your community, we can, we can take care of both of us. All right. So... Uh, you've already talked about what user experience design is. Mm -hmm. uh, there, there are some folks who kind of not want to know where you came from, like how you find your way into a career like this. Do you want to give us a little bit of a sure. rundown of, of how someone becomes a UX designer? 
Yeah, so I've had an interesting journey. Uh, I went to a small art school where I got a Bachelor of Science in Marketing, Branding, and PR, <laughs> um, but also focused on kind of user experience at the time. It was still somewhat new of a job or a career path. Mm -hmm. uh, so it was one of those things where I bundled a bunch of classes together and kind of made it my own thing. Uh, from there, went to a couple different advertising agencies, got tired of advertising, and I was living in Minnesota at the time, and oh, wow. both my girlfriend, now wife, and I were very tired of the cold. So <laughs> like, hey, my, my job's kind of in demand right now. We're tired of the cold. We want to live somewhere new. And that's when I ended up at Blizzard. Um, and I was there for five or six years, uh, working mostly on internal tools and some of their website, but then also uh, how the support site uh, or support in general worked within the games themselves. So if anyone plays World of Warcraft, you can access in-game support. Um, and then for titles in the future, potentially there might be in-game support. Uh, but yeah, so I worked a lot with stuff like on top of the game, so to speak, but not so much in the game itself. Like I wasn't affecting like how a character would work or something like that. Uh, and then moved over to Undead Labs now uh, where I am working on State of Decay 2 in its entirety. So where, okay, you're over here. Let me let me drop you a, uh, a plague here. There you go. Thank you. Let me get off of it. Okay, I am cured. How are you doing? I will be cured as of right now. Sweet. Do you have a first aid kit by any chance? Uh, I do. Yes, I can grab you a first aid kit. All kinds of injuries. I kind of have those too, actually. So yeah, let me come out. Rather than making you oh, deal with sorry. it inside, let me let me drop it outside here for you. <laughs> there you go. Enjoy your first aid kit. Thanks. So I should I should replenish my ammo and drop some stuff off here. Yeah, I'm going to use that first aid kit too, get rid of my injuries. And then, so we've got uh, a bounty to go after armored Zeds with explosives, uh, which can be challenging because uh, they're pretty resilient folks. Let me see what I have in the way of explosives. Not a lot. I've got mostly fire here. I've got some pipe bombs. I've got some box mines. So, oh, oh wait, oh, oh, I just saw some military landmines too. There, oh, I've got a ton of these landmines. Okay, so what I want to do is go out and set some traps for some armored zombies, if we can find some. Uh, and not to keep asking for more, Jeffrey, oh, yeah, do you me... have an espresso by any chance? <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, you're tired? Yeah, uh, let me see. Need some me caffeine. See I, I might at least have coffee. I think I've just got regular old coffee type coffee. Um, uh, I'll take whatever you have. Yeah, let me, um, here, I'll drop this. Boink. There you go. Coffee on the ground. I just, you know, dumped your coffee out on the ground for you. Enjoy. <laughs> Lick it up. Uh, sorry. Hey, why, why I'm running out of energy. <laughs> All right. Well, let's take the ambulance down to uh, find some military site. Hopefully we'll get some. Oh, holy crap. Hopefully get we'll get some uh, spawns like, okay, well, there's a military outpost down here, but I've already claimed it. So it's got a safe zone around it. So it's probably not spawning a whole ton of armored zombies. There is a military checkpoint up here. That might be a good spot to find them. Um, I believe there's also a checkpoint down here. Uh, they're equal distant from us, so let's just grab the one that I've already got marked. So yeah, if you're looking for armored Zeds, go near a military checkpoint. We've got these little volumes around those that make armored Zeds a lot more common uh, in those areas. Let's see here. So, like, let's see here. So what's the process? Like when you're developing a new feature and you need to figure out what the best way to drop it into somebody's hands is, like what, what's the part of the job that, that you do? What, how, do, how, do you how do you get started? Uh, and, and, and what do you sort of, yeah, what's the process you go through? Yeah, so I remember a couple of years ago, I was talking to some folks uh, who work on games and they were concerned that like a UX role is just about making everything easy. Uh, and th that isn't the case. Uh, some things are difficult because we want them to be difficult. Um, but what I try to do is take the game designer's intent of whatever feature it happens to be, marry that with 
kind of the the pillars of the game, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And then as best as I can, understanding how our players work, how players in general work, best practices and all that kind of stuff. Um, and then marry that all together. So if I'm given a new feature that I need to like go through and do the steps of UX on, uh, a lot of times the first steps is just having a bunch of conversations with folks on the team of, well, what is your expectation of this mechanic or feature? Uh, and trying to get a sense from game designers, narrative folks, uh, even audio and uh, visual folks too, and seeing what their impressions are. And then from there, kind of building out a flow, so to speak, on how a player will learn about the feature, how they'll progress through the feature, how uh, all the edge cases. So like what happens if a player, uh, their last community member dies? Like what happens to the a certain thing then? Mm -hmm. Or, or what happens if they're in multiplayer and someone quits unexpectedly or something like that. So just trying to find all the edge cases yeah. uh, and then making sure that we try to account for all that beforehand. Yeah, so it's like, so a big part of your job is sort of thinking of all, like, like, like if, if, if a game designer like me is just sort of shotgunning, oh, it should work like this. It's your job yeah. to catch all of the dumb things I didn't think of. Uh, <laughs> and and you, you end up making sort of a Give lot of- Give yourself more credit than that. Oh, no, oh, oh, every, everyone, everyone in the world, no matter what their job, they think of some dumb things. Like there's nothing special about the fact that I have dumb ideas yeah. sometimes. But, uh, but you end up making sort of a lot of flow charts, diagrams, you know, charts, mm -hmm. documents to sort of like explain not just you know how a feature should work, but all like all of the different like like the really getting into the details of the flow because so much of you know like there's sort of the uh, the the fantasy that you're trying to have with a game where you, where you're thinking in very broad strokes about like I'm in the zombie apocalypse I'm fighting zombies mm -hmm. and I'm getting supplies and my people need the supplies like that's a very sort of broad way to think about a game like this but you've got to think about stuff like okay when the player opens up the inventory. And they want to know where their cursor is. <laughs> where is the cursor? Yeah, right. uh, how do they recognize the cursor and distinguish it from the target of the uh, of the item they're going to equip? And you know, and if maybe one of those is brighter than the other one, we might need to fi fix something uh, or whatever. It's like you know, you end up needing to solve such fine grained uh, problems, but then those fine grained problems add up to actually like oh, yeah. to the tactile experience the player is having with the game. Yeah, uh, and there no one feature is the same as the other as far as like how do we best develop for it. A lot of it is uh, just trying to start at the most basic level of something. So what I'll often find myself doing is just starting with paper, uh, literal pen and paper, <laughs> and writing out all the questions I have for whatever it is I'm working on, and then kind of treating it like a script and like writing out like, okay, this is the first screen that a player will be on. What kind of questions will they have? What are the best step or best next? steps that would be uh, for that or what are the edge cases that we need to account for what are the questions that we don't know <laughs> so it can be pretty involved <laughs> trying to take things as uh, granular as possible in some ways uh, but also not getting too deep where, where you lose know, sight of the forest for the trees basically yeah right like it, again using the crosshair example like if we wanted to like completely rework crosshairs uh, again not that we are <laughs> um, <laughs> like what are what kind of questions do we have or can we just sketch this out on a whiteboard right now we don't have the benefit of being in the same place but uh we have digital versions of whiteboards that we will use uh so yeah, yeah there's, there's to, a lot of new of... digital tools that have started thriving during the pandemic because people suddenly needed yeah. ways to do stuff like whiteboard sketches with nobody being in the same room together which has kind of been fun discovering some of these Indeed. tools yeah, I'm sure we'll be able to leverage that too, to some extent, even when work from home is over or when it's a mix or whatever it happens to turn into. Yeah, I'm kind of hoping it's never completely over because it's actually been really yeah. useful for me to be a, like around to you know help out with my kids' education and stuff like that. I don't get much mm -hmm. time to do that, but I'd love to be able to take just a little bit of heat off my wife uh, now and then during the day. <laughs> and being home has been has been great for that. And so like, there's definitely parts of my job that will be better done in the office once we're all in the office. But having the freedom to be home on a particular day but still participate in meetings and brainstorming and stuff like that sounds really, really valuable. So yeah, I do hope we keep that up. Definitely, yeah. Like it's been one heck of a year or two or however long it's been. <laughs> uh, but hopefully we have some good habits that we got built out of it too. Well, I'm disappointed in the lack of um, army zombies that have shown up here. So I think we need to go maybe look at another place and see if some of them have spawned there. We'll head up this way. It looks like, uh, oh, we've got a mysterious wandering trader to check out too. So we, 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 might, we might do a little bit of that. 
but yeah, so there, there are a lot of people who um, sort of describe the ideal way to do their job, and then in practice they don't do it like that at all. The way that yeah. the ideal way that Chris just explained his job is actually what he does, uh, which is a, <laughs> which is a really kind of fun thing about working with Chris is that he is as thorough and his work is as beautiful as you actually want it to be. Uh, but you usually sort of assume that oh, well nothing's ever going to be that good. So uh, I really I mean I don't know what Chris you don't have to respond to that. I realize it's really <laughs> awkward to give you a, 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 a obnoxious compliment on the air, but there you go. Uh, Chris is good at his job. And you all should be glad that he's on our team. Oh, I'll make sure to bring this up in my yearly <laughs> review. <laughs> okay, excellent. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, let's see, we got another couple of questions from the chat. So, there are some folks who are wondering what difficulty level we're playing at. And the difficulty level we're playing at is, oh, it looks like we got Dread Combat and Community and Map Green. Uh, I had forgotten about that. I thought we were on Dread across the board, but I guess I went with Green, uh, with Green Community and Map, mostly just to keep things from, you know, getting too desperate when it comes to the resources. When we're playing the game on the air, you know, the last thing we want to do is just have the game, uh, you know, have it be all about resource management. You know, that's fun to do in your head, not necessarily fun to watch in a stream. <laughs> yeah. uh, and so we make the resources easy and we just make the combat a little bit harder. Now, you and I are like dread level players generally, right? Like uh, when we're playing the game at home. Typically. Yeah, I remember when I was interviewing for the job, or right after I got accepted, I think, I played through Nightmare and finished the Nightmare campaign. And wow. I was struggling at points. I'm like, oh, God, like I have to finish this campaign. Otherwise, everyone's going to think I'm a big loser if I can't finish <laughs> Nightmare. <laughs> well, I wouldn't have judged you. I actually, I attempted to do a Nightmare campaign on my personal stream and completely failed. Uh, the community just got into such dire straits that it was just no point anymore. Uh, so, yeah, I had to give up. I've only been able to be successful in the Dread Zone. So I think you might actually be a better player than me. <laughs> but neither of us probably compares to say um, Joe Swarner, uh, who's a, who a frequent host of this uh, of this oh, stream, no. who is very very good at this game. If we did like world worldwide rankings of State of Decay players, he would probably be up there. Oh, for sure. With He's some of our other community members, of course. We, we did have someone who asked why I prefer to use a shotgun. Uh, I don't actually prefer to use a shotgun. Generally, I tend to run around with. Um, like probably like a low caliber rifle that's got uh you know like i think the the, the fake a47 is actually one of my favorites because it's it's uh you know kind of inexpensive to run with most zombies you don't actually need you don't need a lot of power you just need to get a bullet into the head uh and so i prefer to run with something like that most of the time the reason i'm running with the shotgun right now is because it looks so good for a zombie to just explode into blood and guts. Uh, and so because we're doing a stream... <laughs> Makes just, for good streaming material. I just love the way this looks. And also, I'm using this shotgun because it's from the Plunder Pack. And the Plunder Pack is the most recently released pack. And we want people to see how awesome it is so they'll come back and play the game. So this, this particular shotgun is one of our, like... It's got one of the widest cones of fire <laughs> anywhere in the game. <laughs> So once I've run out of enough shotgun shells, I'll actually have room in my inventory to uh, scavenge something. Right now, I'm just running around doing damage. And again, we have not run into any armored zombies. And so it feels I like seen it feels like the advice that I gave, like, oh, yeah, do this if you want to, um, you know, find armored zombies. Uh, it is not proving itself to be very accurate. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, maybe this is, maybe we should just head back to the bounty broker and see what else he ha he's got for us. I think the car is this way, right? Did I leave the ambulance over here? Uh, I think so. It's running a little... Ah, zombie. It's running a little bit out low on gas. I think we're doing okay, though. I think we're doing okay. Yeah, I got some blood plague, but it's pretty low right now. Okay, cool. Someone suggested to go to a military checkpoint. Uh, that, that that is where we were, unfortunately. Oh, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, so like, as as a, a designer, like, what are what are your sources of inspiration? Like, what what's out there in the world that sort of that makes you feel like you you know inspires you to be even better at your job? Sure. Yeah. So I I kind of find myself as a chronic hobbyist, I guess. Yeah. Um, I got into photography to some extent. Um, for a brief period of time when I was in California, I got into surfing, which isn't like design related, but it, I found <laughs> like it helps me clear my head. And I actually got into it because traffic in Southern California is so bad that uh, I would drive down to Newport Beach, which is close to the Blizzard campus 
at like six or five forty five in the morning, go surfing and drive into work and shower and then go to work. <laughs> but now that I'm not having to wake up at five forty five <laughs> anymore, I try to find more hobbies. But yeah, outside of like random uh, things to explore, whether it's like not related to games uh, for inspiration. Uh, I'll always like watch streams. Like a lot of the times I'll have Save the K2 streams up on the side just to watch how people are playing it uh, and see comments on it too. Uh, and then also just messing around with games. So especially now that I'm working on the, a game, I try to force myself not to be super completionist about things where <laughs> like during playing The Witcher 3, for example, I think I've started that three times because I'm one of those people that have to cross off every single thing on the map. Yeah. Uh, but now I'm trying to get more of a wide diversity <laughs> of games to get inspiration from. Yeah, that's that's really hard for me too. There, there's some games where because I, I end up ruining the experience for myself uh, because I end up getting so obsessed with getting everything exactly right yeah. that I end up like building up so much emotional energy around it that I actually can't enjoy it. And that's a uh, that that's a problem with me. But it's also you know learning things about yourself and your own personality does kind of teach yeah. you stuff about how other players might be, right? Exactly, yeah. And if it's a game that I can save scum on, I'm going to save scum it so much. Like, I love <laughs> XCOM, but it takes me so long to finish it because I'll just sit there and save scum constantly. Why did I come back <laughs> I need here? to break that habit. I was going to go to the bounty broker. I just, you know, you're just so interesting to talk to, Chris. Let's get back in the car. You're so interesting to talk to. I just, I get distracted and, uh, and we're going out. So, so uh, you know, talking about the games that you play, like what, what aside from The Witcher, like, like what other games are, are, are you into right now? Sure. Um, so I just picked up Stardew Valley again, especially now that they added in like couch co-op or side-by-side -side co-op. Mm. Um, so that's something that I'm thinking about diving into a little bit more. Uh, for a while, I was super into Animal Crossing along with my wife. And my wife's still playing Animal Crossing constantly, but now I want to see if I can bring her over to the Stardew Valley side. <laughs> <laughs> um, Hitman 3 is another one that I played for a bit. I haven't touched it in a week or two, but I just love the Hitman games in general. Yeah, that that uh, is definitely an example like, of a series where I get yeah. so worked up about it that I actually I have to take break, like long breaks from it because I get so into a level. <laughs> I, I end up doing nothing else but play that level again and again and again, trying to discover everything. Yeah, and I love all the different ways you can do things. So, the way I always explain it to people is just like it's murder chess. Oh, <laughs> murder chess, to... interesting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, and then Cyberpunk played a bunch of that. Oh, um, gotcha. Somewhat recently, but yeah, I love that game too. Okay, this is where I actually wanted to be. Let's cash in some of these bounties. Oh, actually, let's see. Do I have room in the trunk to like? Yes. Okay, I've got way too much crap in my pockets because I thought I was gonna be blowing some stuff up and I did not. So I'm gonna drop off some of this stuff here. So let's claim our bounties. So, ooh. So we get the car. A new nice. car. And, uh, <laughs> oh, and the Echo S3 shotgun. So again, new awesome shotgun. Though this shotgun is real different from the one I've been using. This is one of our only, I think it might be our only suppressed shotgun in the game. Uh, it's a high tech, crazy, weird uh, g gun from this military unit called... Uh, called echo lab and uh yeah it's um it's great so now i've got a new shotgun that's awesome the thing we should find though is the new car that we just unlocked that's part of the plunder pack i just unlocked it of course you know you might not have it but whatever <laughs> whatever I'm, I'm what matters i'm the host <laughs> Uh, so Owen Elias wants to know if we watch if we watch any like a post-apocalyptic tv shows or movies for inspiration um, I did just watch the new Stand miniseries. Oh, I haven't seen that uh, yet. It was actually pretty good. I want to go back and rewatch the one from the 90s. I was a youngin back then. <laughs> I remember being fascinated uh, by that. Like I was re at the time I was like yeah. reading The Hot Zone. Ebola was just sort of like newly in the in the mm -hmm. consciousness. Um, and I was just like, oh my gosh, what, what what if this happened? And The Stand was this just like brutal representation. Of, of, yeah. of an apocalypse like that. Oh, it was ter yeah, terrifying. Yeah, I can't remember what the original was like. I know the original miniseries is different from the books in some ways. And then the new miniseries is different from the original miniseries. Like, they redid some of the characters and how they work. And I think they even turned some characters into two. Um, oh. But, yeah, I, I don't know the exact specifics on how it's different. But I enjoyed it. It was fun. Yeah, I really love uh, uh, like apocalyptic fiction. It's kind of... Uh, I, I've just mm -hmm. got this thing for... Um, 
for stories that 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 make you get by on as little hope as possible. It's like yeah. there's, there's something special about the idea of you know. Of, of making things so bad that the tiniest little shred of hope feels really good. There's just something <laughs> weird about that contrast. It's almost like, you know, dramatic chiaroscuro or something like that. I don't know exactly what it is, <laughs> but like, so like Children of Men, for instance, is one of my all time favorite movies oh, yeah. uh, because it's just like. Or The Road. Or, oh, the, I, so I haven't watched The Road. I read The Road. And after reading The Road, I did yeah. not want to watch The Road. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard. It's so harsh. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but there is this tiny little bit of hope, and it's like, oh man, I mean, I don't want to talk about the ending, I don't want to ruin the ending for people, but at least the way that I view the ending, it's one of the most savage ways of building hope, it, for, like, like giving mm -hmm. the audience a little bit of hope to cling to, that I've, just, I've never been hurt so much, but also, um, you know, fall in love so much with the ending of a book, it was just, oh, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, but I, I think recently um, I've started watching the um, Tribes of Europa, uh, which is a uh, it, it's a Netflix show. I think it's from Germany. Um, it's been fascinating. So it's 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 like a, sort of a it's kind of a mysterious apocalypse. Like electrical stuff stopped working, and then society collapsed as a result. But it, I've heard about this. Yeah, yeah. There's sort of a a mystery though about like where that came from, like why it happened. Uh, and so I'm only a couple episodes in, so I don't really know very much. One thing that's been fascinating though is how multilingual the story is. Like like when people mm -hmm. are are you know. I, oh, I've got another ambulance. Let's get in this ambulance now. Do actually, I'll take you over to the other ambulance. Let's just drive two ambulances around. Okay. We're almost out of time. Might as well just do something weird. Um, right. Wait, where's the exit? It's over here, isn't it? There we are. Um, but yeah, it's like it's very multilingual. It's like you've got you know, and actually, it, it's not quite okay. It's not quite as multilingual as um. Oh, what was it? Space. So oh, what what was that? Sh the Korean show. Here, you, you keep this one. You can switch over. Um, there's a Korean show about, like, people in space who are, like, scavengers, garbage collectors. Okay, that's my son knocking on the door. He uh, <laughs> doesn't realize that I'm doing the stream and cannot help him right now. Yeah, such as uh, working from home. Yes, exactly. That's how that goes. I really hope somebody else notices that's going on and stops him soon. Uh here, I'll let, I'll, here you, you lead the way. You just decide where we're going. I'll follow you. One second. You. I just got... Oh, you just got bloated? Bloated. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. Oh, see that trail of There's smoke There's a juggernaut running you. somewhere. Nice. That's beautiful. Oh, here's some zombies. Oh. So, the darkness in this game. I mean, this is yeah. not the first thing that a person would usually do. Oh, wait. You know what I forgot to do? I forgot to go check on that car. We should go check out... Let's, let's drive our ambulances over and check out the new car that we got. It's marked on the map. Let's go overland in our crazy ambulances. But yeah, but like, so, oh, I'm trying to remember what the name of that show was. But anyway, so there was this recent, uh, I think they're both on Netflix. There's a recent Korean show about people in space. Oh, get off me. And uh, and then this show where it's like everyone speaks different languages constantly, and it huh. almost it, it really is kind of showing a lot of I don't know respect for the audience that they can sort of jump languages and understand what's going on. Now a lot of the times, of course, I rely on subtitles for anyone who's speaking right. anything other than English. Um, but uh, but it's just it's fascinating to see sort of a world depicted that way, where um, you know it's people from all these different backgrounds and all these different uh, languages all still sort of working together and and and. Uh, I don't know, just just having this experience together. It, it, it's just fun. I don't know. I love one of my favorite things in in working on State of K two was creating all the different sort of cultural backgrounds and name lists and stuff for characters from different backgrounds. And and I liked sort of the the theme in the game of all these people from all of these different places coming together and and, and working together in, a, in in a tiny little community. Yeah, that was actually one of the things that really drew me to the game and wanting to work here too was just oh, really appreciating that kind of a bridge. Oh, there are so many zombies There's a couple here. zombies. <laughs> it is so dark right now. But it's kind of dark. You can't really see this car very well. But this is one of my favorite cars in the game. This is... Uh, Same. Yeah, it's called the Megalodon. It's themed like the... Oh, like the big purple Megalodons that they have in uh, Sea of Thieves. And uh, it is a nasty, big, fancy muscle car. It's not the fastest car in the game, but it sure feels like you got a lot of power. So yeah, but yeah, I think uh, Tribes of Europa has actually got one of the uh, actors from from Dark in it, and Dark is another apocalyptic That's show. That's another one. I yeah. love that show. 
I haven't watched. I think I watched one or two episodes, but then for whatever reason, I fell off of it. Oh, you have but not even seen I where this show to. goes. This show goes places, <laughs> and I'm not going to tell you what any of them are. I've give, I've told you too much by putting it into this category. Um, yeah, I'm currently trying to get through the expanse so that's Ooh. another show that i've started like two times and for whatever reason fell off in the first three or four episodes but now i'm trying to power through the from what i've told been told uh first season isn't quite as good as the rest but then after the first season it's really good they do really find their footing and yeah like I, i'm a huge fan of the books and so like yeah i was along for the ride the entire time because i knew what was coming i knew the whole story really really well <laughs> um it's 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 my favorite book series of all time like I, I can't believe how good it is so yeah that's that's a big i'm a big fan of that nice all right so uh we are coming close to uh what's gonna have to be the end of this let's let's maybe find a a, a nice quiet place to sort of hole up and uh feel relatively safe Maybe uh, I don't know. Climb on top of something somewhere, and then we can uh, we can say our goodbyes to the audience. Sounds like a plan. <laughs> Let's see. There's a hello zombie. I wonder if we can climb up on this stuff, like up on this car or something, and then maybe up onto this. Oh no! Oh no! Things are going badly. Can I get? Oh yeah, I can't jump onto the trailer. I don't think. I guess I'll have to be happy with the car. Here. Ha <laughs> ha, look at us zombies, you can't get there. And I've got a suppressed shotgun. <laughs> I can shotgun the crap out of these zombies and not bring anyone else. <laughs> awesome, okay, so just to remind everybody, especially those who may have joined us late, the theme of this has not been us talking about our favorite apocalyptic TV shows and movies. Uh, what we're talking about today is an open beta. So State of Decay 2 is going to be running an open beta starting very soon. It's going to be on Steam. Uh, and because it's an open beta, people are going to be able to talk about what they find in there. Uh, so you'll be able to, people will be able to stream in the beta branch. They're going to be able to uh, talk on social media about it. And so we're going to start revealing some of the upcoming features of State of Decay 2 via this beta. And so uh, stay tuned. If you want to be in part of the beta or you just want to know what's going on with it uh you can sign up for our newsletter it's www.stateofdecay.com contact fill out that form get the newsletter coming uh newsletter coming into your email box and you'll know everything that <laughs> that, that there is to know uh about the upcoming beta and so we can't wait like on this stream we're gonna start you know uh once the beta goes live we'll start running streams here about uh, the features that are revealed in that beta and then as time goes on you know those features in the beta are not the only features we're working on we'll have a lot more to reveal so Definitely stick around on this stream. Subscribe to us. Uh, we want to have as many people, uh, you know, know about this stuff as we possibly can. So, uh, Chris, uh, would you have anything to say to the audience before we get out of here? Uh, I mean, you pretty much recapped everything. Uh, all I'll say is, like, yeah, if you are at all interested, please participate in uh, the beta. Uh, we are always looking for feedback uh, from our players, and we are hoping that this beta will help make that final uh, launch that much better. Yeah, same here. So, uh, so you know, join us next week. Uh, you know, first of all, subscribe to us on YouTube uh, if you want to keep getting updates. Because uh, if, if if you're not interested in getting a newsletter in your email box, we understand. We're also still going to be running this stream every week. And so, if you want to uh, to keep getting updates about what's going on, discussions with various developers about the new features that we reveal in the beta, all of that stuff, we're going to keep doing that here on this channel. And features that are not in the beta that we announce in the future, we're going to announce here. So uh, please stick with us. And uh, with that. Let's get out of here. All right. <laughs> See you. In about 20 seconds after the YouTube end screen is done. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, there's something screaming out in the distance. Oh, I can't wait. Can't wait. We'll probably, you know, we should just quit the game. Just quit. <laughs> probably get out of here. Best. You're about to get booted. <laughs>